Thank you. Okay, so this morning I want to talk to you about living your life with an intention or living your life intentionally. Okay, there's a huge difference between having a good intention and doing something intentional. Right? The way to hell is paved with good intentions. That is what we hear. The way to hell is, is, is paved with good intentions. So why does it say that? Because many people have good intentions, but it's like a daydream. And then it ends up to be a nightmare. Because you have all these intentions to do all these great things. And then you get to that place and you've never done it. And then it becomes a nightmare. And we understand that people have good intentions to do things. But then people get offended because of it. People get hurt because of it. And a good intention cannot help anybody. Okay? Unless you act upon that intention. If you are intentional about your intention then that intention will become fruitful. Otherwise, it is just a daydream. Amen. So, intention is a psychological state, whereas to be intentional is a being state. There's a big difference. A psychological state is what you think or believe or hope, but it doesn't mean that it is actually what you do. Okay? A person can look fine in the being state, but psychologically they can be depressed. They can look fine in the being state, but psychologically they can be a schizophrenic. So you can be, you can be, you look normal and there's no action, but you can have a great intention. That's just the opposite. You can have this great intention, but you just never get intentional. But when you become intentional, that is the fruit of your intention. So you've got to get to the job to get the job done. So that's what it means to be intentional. It is a being state, a state of being active, productive, and busy. And not just sit back and hope something will happen. Too many people, they will say, well, that was never my intention to say something like that. Or it was never my intention what, you, what happened at the end of the day. But because you didn't act upon your intention, now it causes hell for somebody else. Because you didn't act upon your intention, and you there wasn't intentional about what you believed and what you said, now people interpret it the other way. So, a good intention is never a good interpretation. Or well, there's never a good interpretation for a good intention until the intention is being acted upon, until you become intentional. So you can have an intention to pray every day, but you just don't. You can have an intention to go to church, but you don't end up there. You can have an intention to have a great life, but you just don't have a great life. You can have an intention to, to have a fantastic home cell structure, a beautiful thing, a beautiful band, a beautiful media team, but you're not intentional in working hard and planning and get the job done to make it better. Your intention is to be the best, but you just don't work hard enough to be the best. Your intention is to be the greatest, but you don't put in the hard yard every day to make sure that you are the best. You can have an intention to be the best sportsman, but if you don't discipline yourself and work hard every day, practice, practice, practice to become perfect, then you will never become that sportsman. And that's how it works in every other area of your dreams. You can have a great intention with a great dream, but if you don't do something about it, then that becomes a nightmare. It becomes hell. And your intention paved your way to that hell that you're going to live. There's nothing worse than coming at the end of your life looking back and you are, you are disappointed in yourself for not reaching what you wanted to. There's nothing worse than a living with regret. I should have. I should have worked harder. I should have gotten up earlier in the morning. I should have actually gone for that interview. I should have. But then every time you have an intention to go, but you don't do it. It's like your follow-ups. You have an intention to do your follow-up, but you just don't get there. And you just don't do it. And then you live with regret. I should have. Because now that person that got born again got lost again. And nobody followed them up. So your intention was to follow up, but you didn't get up and do it. That's the difference between living with an intention and being intentional. We are active people that live intentional. When you get up in the morning, you get up for purpose. When you get up in the morning, you get up with a mission. When you get up in the morning, you work towards your vision. When you get up in the morning, you make some money. When you get up in the morning, you have purpose, you have life. You don't just go through life hoping that something good will happen. Many people live their lives hoping things will happen. 
Hoping is not going to create it. You've got to get up and act. You've got to get up and do something about it. Amen. Having intentions will never build anything. But being intentional will create worlds only imagined by dreamers. Live intentional. Live intentionally. Or in other words, live with purpose on purpose. You can know your purpose, but if you're not living it on purpose, then you will never fulfill your purpose. The Bible says in John chapter 15 verse 8, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So God is glorified through the fruit. We don't judge people, but the Bible says you shall judge the tree by its fruit. So if I want to know if you are hardworking, then I have to look at you. Are you fruitful in hard work or is it just your intention to be a good worker? If I don't see the fruit, then I do not understand what the tree means. An apple tree has to bear apples, otherwise it's just a tree looking like an apple tree. There must be some apples to eat. If you are a hardworking, diligent, faithful person, and you actually work hard and you are faithful and diligent, then we can see that that is your intention. But your intention can only be evaluated by the fruit of your intentional activity. Are you with me? So, you want to be fruitful? You want to be multiplying? Yes. You want to multiply. You want to be fruitful because your fruit will glorify God. Your fruit will glorify God. Amen. He says, by this my Father is glorified by the fruit that you bear. Now, you are fruitful. Why? Because God said you are fruitful. Fruitfulness is a state of being. It is not something that you try to do. People say to me, well, Pastor, I don't bear fruit. No, you do bear fruit. Maybe you bear fruit of inactivity. Maybe you bear fruit of prayerlessness. Maybe you bear fruit of faithlessness. But that's fruit. Because if there's no fruit, it is fruit of some inactivity. Okay, are you with me? If I do something, it bears fruit. If I do nothing, it bears fruit. What is that fruit? Nothing. So there's fruit. It's not, well, I try my best and I don't get fruit. No, then you make God a liar. Because God is not a liar. And God said, I have blessed you. And God said, I have made you fruitful. I've made you to multiply. Now, if God said you are fruitful, then who are you to say that you are not? If God says you are fruitful, how can you not bear fruit? Okay, so you're with me. If I do not bear fruit, it is fruit of doing nothing. Of having an intention, but not being intentional. Well, it's, I intend to pray. I intend to be strong. I intend my marriage to work. I intend my children to be great. I, I, you know my heart. I've got a good heart. We all have good hearts, right? The Bible says, do not trust your heart because it's desperately wicked above all things. And he who trusts in the heart of man, he is like a shrub in the desert. He doesn't know when good comes. He dries up and he doesn't know any good thing. But he that trusts in the Lord is like a tree that is planted by the rivers of living water where he will bear his fruit even up until old age and he will not even know when difficulty comes. So your trust should be in God. Your trust should not be in your heart. Well, I ken toch maar net my hart. My heart was maar net, ek het een goeie intensie gehad. Ok, maar jy was nie intentioneel gewees oor jou intensie nie. En dis hoe kom hulle jou gemisjudge het. Ok? So you have to take the intention of your heart and become intentional about it. You've got to work it out. You've got to do something with what you believe. You've got to do something with what you want to create. If you have a dream, you've got to be active, my friend. No dreams is accomplished by inactivity. A lot of activity makes great dreams come true. But inactivity just makes nightmares come true. Nightmares are those things that you really doesn't want to happen to you. And that is exactly what happens if you have inactivity. So God comes in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, 28 and the Bible says and God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And then God blessed them. I'm going to say it again. And then God blessed them. And then God blessed them. What does blessing mean? To be empowered to prosper. To be empowered to be successful. To be empowered to have great success. God has blessed Adam and Eve and we were in them in that moment. 
Because when God blesses, He blesses everything on the inside. I don't know about you, but I'm the seed of Adam. And when God blessed Adam, I was blessed. When God blessed Abraham, I am a seed of faith of Abraham, which means I was blessed. And then in the New Testament, the Bible says that we have received every spiritual blessing of the Lord. So what does this mean? My friend, I want to tell you, there is no reason why you should fail. There is no reason why you should not excel and be successful. There is no reason. The only reason why you would not is because you do not activate what is on the inside. It's because you are not intentional working out that which God has already placed on the inside of you. Because if you know what is in you, if you know that you are blessed, if you know that all things that you touch and put your hand to will prosper, because that's what God said. God said, blessed will you be in the city. Blessed will you be in the field. Blessed will you be in your body. Blessed will you be what you touch with your hand. Blessed will you be. You are blessed in everything. There is nothing that can curse you. Because this is what the Bible says. You cannot bless what God has, you cannot curse what God has blessed. You can't. If God has blessed it, you cannot curse it. So don't be afraid of somebody putting a curse on you. No, 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 no. Many people live and they say, Oh, pastor, and somebody has cursed me. Iemand het my getoor. I get that a lot. Iemand het my getoor, bid vir my. Jy is nie getoor nie, jy is a kind van Jesus. As a child of God, you cannot be cursed. You cannot be cursed. You cannot because God's blessing is upon you. And if God's blessing is, you cannot put light and darkness on this in the same room. And if God has placed the light, then the darkness cannot enter. You say, yeah, but I feel cursed. No, you feel cursed and you act cursed because you believe you are cursed. But actually, I have to tell you the truth today. You are not cursed. Oh, they try to curse you, but cursed is he who cursed me and blessed is he who blessed me. Why? Because I'm a son of the blessing. Because the blessing of the Lord is upon me. Because I'm a child of the blessed one. And the blessed one himself lives on the inside. Oh, come on, somebody. You are blessed. And God blessed them. God empowered them to prosper. God gave them everything they need to be successful. Everything that you will ever need is on the inside of you. Listen to me. Everything that you ever need is on the inside of you. I always tell the children, I say, hey, come on. You say to me, oh, pastor, I struggle in my studies. I struggle with my metric exam and I, st I struggle. Why are you struggling? You're not supposed to be struggling. Why? Because you have the unfair advantage of the Holy Spirit. You know, when a baby is born, that baby's brain has got the capacity to become anything in this world. That baby can do anything. That baby can speak every language in this world. And then as they are raised, what happens? We activate certain areas in their lives. And then they are becoming good at it. So a child is being activated in that area and then they start to become professional in that area. But any baby can speak any language. Any baby can become any architect, any designer, anything. Any baby can come become anything because the capacity is in it. And this is how God comes and He says, because all the fullness of knowledge I have placed on the inside of you. Do you know that if you use 100% of your brain capacity, you can do anything? You can do anything, which means anything that you need is locked up in here. I mean, just look at this. The kids ask me, no, pastor, I have to learn. Okay, so what is education? Education, education is not giving you something that you don't have. It is just releasing something in you that you already have. You say, pastor, what does that mean? Why, why, why are you reading a textbook of somebody else? Who wrote that textbook? Huh? Who wrote the textbook? Was that guy more clever than you? No. He accessed information in his brain that you haven't. Now you read what he already accessed and then it becomes a revelation. A revelation. Again, it is a revelation. Again, there comes life. There was life already in you, but now he breathed new life on the old life and the old life became new again. Revelation. Because now that renewed life in the dead part of the brain becomes knowledge and wisdom. And I mean, that's what God does. He has given you everything. So when you read the book, all you do, the book is just the key to unlock what you already have. Oh, I've got to get the book to study to become clear, more clever. No, you already have it in you. Why does the Bible say in the New Testament, you don't need a teacher because you have the Holy Spirit? Oh, that's, con that's controversy, right? 
I'm just asking the question. Because if we really access into everything that the Holy Spirit has for us, then there's nothing that we should not know. There shouldn't be any part of wisdom or knowledge that we shouldn't know. Because everything that we study from somebody else is somebody that had to research, research, which means it was already there. So you research what was there, and now because you research what was there, now suddenly it becomes a revelation to you because it's already in there, it just becomes alive. Do you understand? So that's why the Bible says, pray the Holy Ghost. And He will remind you of everything that I've taught you because all knowledge comes from God. It's a good gift from God. Everything that you've ever needed is on the inside of you. You can decide how you're going to unlock that. Through the Word, through the Holy Spirit, or through textbooks. You know what I did? The Bible and the Holy Ghost. And that made me wise beyond my years. That made me clever in my age. That made me get marks in my matric final exam when the rest of the year looked like I was going for a shipwreck. Mm, I'll never forget it. My, my, my first term, my second term, and my third term for maths, I didn't pass over 35%. Then came this revelation, and I said, God, it's in me. You've got to release it. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost, and I said, you've got to help me, Holy Spirit. This stuff is in me. This stuff is in me. Let it come out of me. And then I got 85% for my, my matric final. You say, Pastor, how is it possible? Because we have the unfair advantage of the Holy Ghost. And if, us, if we just understand it, and that's why I'm saying, it is impossible for you to fail if you understand who God is in you. It is impossible for you to fail if you do not, if you understand the capacity of the blessing on the inside. It's impossible. Because all things are possible for those who believe on Jesus Christ. Nothing shall be impossible if you believe on me, says the Lord. But your faith should be in God. And you should know that you are the blessed one of the Lord. That you carry the potential. But you've got to be intentional about it. You see, we want to go through life with crutches and say, Oh, but I am the wrong skin color. Oh, I am the wrong age. Oh, I am the wrong gender. Oh, I mean, really? I don't have the right economical status. I don't have this, I don't have that. And we have all these crutches because every excuse is just another crutch. Why you cannot be everything you can be. Whoever told you that you are stupid because you're not stupid. You are clever. You've got the knowledge of God on the inside of you. You have the power of the Holy Ghost in you. You have the blessing of the Lord upon you. So why are you still struggling? Can I tell you why? Because of this part in the Bible. Because we don't take dominion over these things. We allow this world to dominate us. So instead of us telling the world who we are, we allow the world to dictate to us who we are. Instead of telling the world, you ain't seen me yet. We want to fit into the world. We want to be like the Kardashians. We want to dress like everybody else. Uh-huh. You want to wear the right clothes and every so that you can fit in. And our whole life we try so hard to fit into the system. And God has created you not to fit into the system. You cannot fit into it because you are born of God. You are different. You have been created above. You have been created in the image of God to be like God, to walk like God, to talk like God, to be like God. He said it Yeah, He said, God created man in his own image to be in the image of God. He created him, male and female, to be like God. You were not created to be like the devil. Stop trying to hang around his, his friends and his children. You will not fit. You will never fit. Oh, you will never fit. Because you are different. You have been created to be an eagle amongst the chickens. You have been created to be above and above only and not beneath. To be the head and not the tail. To be above only and not beneath. Come on. That's what God created you to be. So we walk around and we have all these excuses where we limit ourselves. There is no limitation. There is no limitation. The limitation is between your ears, what you believe. You can do all things 
if you believe. You can become that person. Your dream can come true. But then you have to sit every day and you have to be intentional, believing it and achieving it. Believing it and achieving it every single day. Every day you have to live with a focus and a purpose and a target so that you can fulfill what you want to fulfill at the end of your life. So you have your dream, you have your vision, and the vision is the blueprint of your life. But then every day you have to live intentional to get closer to your vision, to get closer. You say, oh, pastor, I don't have the money. Money has never made dreams come true, but dreams has made a lot of money come true. Because we are taught by this world, no, it works this way. No, it doesn't. You have to have passion. You have to have fire. You have to have purpose. You have to have tenacity. You just have to get up in the morning and say, I'm going to make it. And it doesn't matter how I make it, even if I just make it by the skin on my teeth. If I can't run, then I will walk. And if I can't walk, then I will crawl. But get there, I will get there. If it takes 10 years, it doesn't matter. After 10 years, I will be closer than what I am today. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to push through. I'm going to be intentional with my life. Oh, come on, somebody. And he says, and God bless them. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I have everything that I ever will need to become everything that I can ever be. It's in me. Now I want to let it out. Oh, come on, somebody. You've got to release it. And now he says, and God said to them, Listen, God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. God didn't say try to multiply. God didn't say try to be fruitful. It's exactly what I said. But this God gets the what? The glory by you bearing fruit. God has blessed you. God has given you the fruitfulness. God has put upon you fruitfulness, which means in you, you are already fruitful. I said it in the first service. It's amazing if we want to reproduce and we want to have children. It's amazing how quick when you want to have a baby can you find the seed in your body. Hey, man. Quickly you find the seed. Why? Because it's in you. So the seed to your success spiritually is in you. The seed to your success emotionally is in you. Because God doesn't create empty vessels. God creates full vessels and then he puts his spirit upon the vessel and he releases everything that is in the vessel so that that vessel can reproduce after its own kind. That's what God does. He says, now be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. God said, be fruitful. He didn't say, try to be fruitful. How do you be fruitful? You just be. You're not a human trying to be. You're not a human wanna be. You are a human being. You already have it. It's already in you. Stop letting the world tell you it's not in you. Stop letting your parents tell you you can't. You know, I'm one of those people. If you tell me it can't, then I will show you. Tell me I can't do it and I'll show you. Even if it takes the rest of my life, but show you, I will show you. You're not going to tell me I can't do it. I will do it. That's the kind of person I am. I'm not one of those people that, that when you tell me I can't, then I sit in the corner and cry and then I'm all sad and sorry and feel sorry for myself. No, I get on fire and I start to run. I push through. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. You've got to get the fight in you. You've got to get that fight in you to bear fruit and to be fruitful in everything you do. Amen. Because you already have it in you and you already have the Spirit of God upon you. Now he says, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it and have dominion. What does that mean? God says you have to take control of your life. You've got to take control of everything. If you don't take control, it will take control of you. You have to dominate these things in your life because if you don't dominate it, it will dominate you. I said it this morning, sin will dominate you if you don't dominate sin. You have been created above sin. You have been created and given the power by Jesus Christ through the Holy Ghost to overcome your sin. And sin is sin because sin is an addiction. An addiction, what is an addiction? Addiction is when something else starts to dictate your life. You are addicted to it because it is dictating your life. It has dominion over you. So whether I am addicted to tobacco and tobacco tells me that I have to smoke it to feel better or whether I have to drink because alcohol controls me and alcohol tells me that I will feel better when I drink it or whether because some people think, oh my goodness, well, he's a, he's a sinner because he smokes and he drinks. Those are the two easy ones because it's visible. Okay, so you are drinking too much. How about you eating too much? What's the difference? 
The one is drinking and the other one is eating. Gluttoner and alcoholic. What's the difference? It's the same sin. It's the same addiction. It's the same addiction to a tobacco. It's the same addiction to pornography. It's the same addiction to your coffee. It's the same addiction to your, your need to gossip. It's the same addiction to your pride. It's the same addiction. The same thing. Racism is an addiction because the race controls you instead of you controlling the race. Oh, some of you don't like me saying that because your white skin or your black skin or your brown skin tells you that you are better. Are you that deep? Skin deep? That deep? I'd rather be much deeper than that. Huh? Ach, kijk nou. Yeah, why are people like that? When you start to call that thing out, then suddenly everything rebels. It's like talking about money. Same thing. Brrr. Come on, get over your skin color. Get over your financial status. Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, that doesn't define who you are. You are defined by the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of you. You are defined by the Holy God Himself who lives on the inside of you. You are not defined by your hair, by your skin color, by your pig pigmentation. You are defined by He who lives on the inside of you. And greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Oh, come on, somebody. So God gives us vision. God gives us vision and vision sparks purpose. Purpose drives passion. And every single day you have to get up with that passion because that passion becomes your mission. How am I missioning today to fulfill my vision? That's why when we say CRC, our vision, our vision is 13,000 members. Some of you still don't believe it. I still see it every day of my life. I still see 13,000 people. I still see Donny K Stadium filled with CRC members with Pastor Art preaching to them. I still see it every day of my life. It doesn't matter if it is 12 years later. But the day is coming. Oh, the day is coming. It might look impossible to you, but with my God, all things are possible. Now, the question is, if I see that every day, what do I do every day to get to it? Every day I've got to get somebody saved. Every day I've got to feed another person, touch another person, disciple another person, raise up another person. I have to be intentional every single day to preach the gospel. At the end of the year, I will show you what we have already done in the last 12 years in this, this city. Do you know that we have already seen 220,000 salvations in Uppington? Did you ever know it? We, CRC, for the last 12 years, 220,000 salvations. Did you know it? This city has been saved over and over again. Now we have to be intentional to bring these backsliders back home and raise them up. <laughs> I keep count of every salvation, believe me, because I want to get to heaven and say, where are they? Because I'm intentional. Okay, the only thing that I can ever take to heaven with me is people. I can't take money. I can't take anything else. No building, no nothing, no car, no nothing. So what do I do every day? I mission every day to get somebody saved. Another person in heaven with me for the rest of eternity. Every single day of my life. Amen. I see you all shocked now. Pastor, why aren't they in church? Because that is the stats of people giving their lives to Jesus. That's how sad it is. People want to be decisions for Christ, but they don't want to be disciples for Christ. That's why I thank God for you, because you're a disciple. And you're not going to quit after four years. You're not going to quit after eight years. You're not going to quit after 12 years. You're not going to quit after 20 years, because you don't have quit in you. You're not a quitter. You're not a quitter. I'm speaking it over you, some of you. So God gives vision. Vision sparks purpose. Purpose drives mission. Every day you have to mission. You've got to get up. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. We have to build intentionally and not just randomly. The Bible shows us in Nehemiah chapter 3. Over and over the Bible speaks about, and this family built next to this family, and this man built next to this man. And it talks about all the strong men that built with Nehemiah. And each family was positioned next to one another because they had to build together, but they had to focus on their piece of the wall. And every time it says, and every man built the wall in front of his own house. As you build this church, this is the wall that we built. The wall of the 
the standard that God raises in this world. God says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard. The Spirit of God is building you, and the Spirit of God is building through you. Because we as the church, we are the standard. We are the standard. We are the moral standard. We are the moral compass. We are the hope of the world. We are the answer to this world. We the church. And if we're not going to build the church, then the world is flat. But every man has to build. You can't look at me and say, Pastor, you build. No, I'm looking at you at two as well. But I'm not just going to focus on what you're doing. I speak to a lot of pastors in Africa and everybody say to me, Oh, you got to come and build my church. No, I'm building Uppington. I can't build your church. God has given you the responsibility. Build the church, man. And stop asking me to build your church. I've got to build it here. You build it there. Hmm? But that's how we want to live our life. Oh, pastor, you must build my peace. I can't build your peace. God gave you responsibility to build your peace. I can stand next to you and cheer you on and say, come on, come on, because I do that every Sunday. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. God believes in you. You have the anointing. You have the power. But just do something, please. Stop looking at what I'm doing. And work with me. Because together, we get the job done. But if I sit and I criticize you, what happens? I look at my brother building and I criticize his wall. What's happening here? Nothing. As long as I look at you, I don't build. As long as you look at me, you don't build. So let us build where God has placed it in front of our house, in front of you, where you are responsible. I will build my peace. Forget about this one. Forget about that one. Don't criticize. Don't gossip. Build. Build, 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 build. You know, gossiping is also an addiction, a sin. Het jy gehoor? Nee, ek wil nie. Ek stel die belang nie. Was toer, kom ons bid. Ja, dis recht. Ok, bid vir wat? En dan bid die ou so. Vader, jy weet nou ons nou, broeder Pieter, daar onder in die hoek van die straat, daar so by nummer 3, hy is sy kind, en, en dan skinner ons, in plaas van bid. Ach nee man. Pray. Build. Work that which is placed before you. Stop getting distracted with everybody else. Stop getting distracted. And when the resistance come, don't get dis- dis- discouraged. No, keep on building. Keep on building. Just keep on building. Just keep on building. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. A little here, a little there. Just every day, build a bit more. Build a bit more. You know, this, this land of ours, for me, it's like a thorn in the flesh the whole time. Because just when I get ahead, there comes a new thing. There comes a new thing. And then I'm like, oh, Jesus, help us again. Okay? So just when we get the, the, the signature for this, then suddenly there's an issue there. Then we fight this thing again, and then we get it done. Then the next thing comes. I said, God, why can't it be easy? And then God said, because then it's not me. Because if it's too easy to do, then it's not worth it. But when it's difficult, you learn to rely on the unforced rhythms of grace. You start to rely on the power of God and the wisdom of God. So I'm at the place now. My staff look at me funny when I say there's a challenge. And they're like, how are we going to do it, Pastor? Everybody looks worried and I start laughing. Are you insane now, Pastor? No, I'm not insane. All I see is just another obstacle. God's just going to get us over again. And we're just going to, and then we're going to testify of the greatness and the faithfulness of God. Because at the end of the day, the vision will speak. Even though it tarries, it will not tarry. It will come to pass. If God said it, He will do it. And if we work every single day to get the job done, it will be done. Oh, if there's only one thing that I want to teach people, it's to have the tenacity and the grit and the not letting go like a bulldog. You want to grip your teeth in there and you want to hold on for dear life. Just don't let go. Don't quit. Because if you quit, you die. Your vision die, your dream die, everything's dry. So just keep going. Just keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Don't stop. Keep at it. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. You will build that structure. You will build that home cell. You will build that band. You will build that team. You will build that company. You will build that family. Oh, come on, somebody. So the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10, it says, 
For precept must be put upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. People hear me quote this stuff and they don't even know it's in the Bible. There it is. Wow, pastor, it's in the Bible. Yes. That's what your pastor do. I love the word. And I learned from the word and you have to be intentional. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6, it says the people had a mind to work. If you're not going to be intentional and you're going to live your whole life hoping things are going to happen, it's not going to happen. You've got to get up every morning and you've got to put your effort into it. And you're going to have to say, today I built. Today I'm going to get closer to that vision. Today I'm going to do something that will bring me closer at the end of this day to my vision than what I've been when I started this day. Oh, you've got to get up every day. You've got to plan every day. You've got to work every day to get closer to where you have to be. I mean, that's what Jesus did. Jesus took three years and he built intentionally. Day after day, he built into these disciples. He built into them. They didn't know what he was building, but he was building character. He was building tenacity. He was building everything that he could inside of them. And then the day that he hung on the cross, he knew, I have to endure this cross because once I endure this cross, the Holy Spirit will come. And when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will activate everything that I have placed in these people. And when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus breathed upon them and he said receive ye the Holy Ghost and then suddenly these 12 people stood up and 11 of them became some of the greatest people ever the greatest apostles they preached the gospel they get people saved these are people that were unstoppable they were martyred to death but nothing could stop them because Jesus for three years he built into them line upon line precept upon precept a little here a little there because he knew that these people will carry the gospel oh come on we have to understand that God is building us so that we can be strong. Don't quit when you're old. You're not done. If you haven't died of corona, you still have a plan. Oh, come on. You're not supposed to be dead yet. You're supposed to make a difference. You're supposed to get somebody saved. You're supposed to build that company. You're supposed to make some millions and bring it to the house of God. We're supposed to get some people saved. Oh man, we have to build this church. We have to still go up and get many people saved. The world is at our feet. We've got so much to do. I just get more charged up. Other people want to go to heaven and I'm like, just give me more to go preach the gospel. Let's buy a truck and preach. Let's buy another truck and preach. Let's buy some 10 trucks and let's go preach. Let's go rent the stadium and let's preach. Come on, what can, what's going to stop us? Nothing. Because we have a purpose and our purpose is to get people saved. Oh, hallelujah. The evangelist is coming alive again. Amen. But everything happens through structure. God gives us structure. My time is up. God gives us structure to build. What is the structure? The structure is the structure of multiplication, not replacement. And so it's so funny. As long as I've been building the church, you always find a person in leadership, and all they do is they, they become the leader because they know they need it, but then instead of becoming the leader that's going to lead thousands, then they just become the leader that looks for the next person to replace them. Who can replace me? Because... Oh, and it's not difficult to be a leader. It's who you are. You're a human being. You're a leader. That's what God created you to be. Oh, I can't handle the pressure. Then die because you can't handle the pressure of life. <laughs> you are a leader, whether you like it or not. People listen to you. They follow you. Sometimes people say, well, pastor, a leader of what? Well, pick up your phone and just look at your, 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 your contacts. Because every number you press, somebody's going to answer. That is influence. You tell me nobody listens to me until you press their button. And they answer. Then they listen to you. That's your influence. That's leadership. Use it. Leadership is not something that, that's falling on you. Some supernatural ability. No. Leadership is just getting up, being intentional, and get the job done. That's leadership. You produce after your kind. You produce somebody like you. So if you're lazy, you're going to produce a bunch of lazy people. If you're inactive, you're going to produce inactivity. So get up, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, early in the morning. Get some purpose. Have a, have a goal at the end of the, the day or the week or the month and get the job done. 
Oh, come on, man. Spiritually, emotionally, in your education, in the business that you start, whatever you have to do. Come on, find some life and find some purpose and get to do it. Because when you do it, then suddenly you produce. And listen, this is what structure is. It's multiplication. It's not adding and subtracting. Everyone has to produce at least two of himself. Okay, because the Bible says, how can, if, if I just replace myself, now how can one person keep warm alone? How can one person walk, and if he falls, who's going to pick them up? The Bible says that two walk together, then the one can pick up the other. When two walk together, and they, they sleep over and they are cold, then at least the one can keep the other one warm. And then it says, but a three-corded rope, who can break? So if I, as a leader, produce two people like me, then we are three. And who can break three? Nobody. But I have to be intentional, intentional. Every day I have to look, I have to find first, then I have to train, and then I can release. It takes a lot of effort in the beginning to find somebody like yourself. That's why when you build structure, when you build business, when you build leadership, everything starts with structure. And in the beginning it takes time. But then after a while, that multiplication suddenly becomes exponential. It starts small, but it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you start right and you build right and you produce the right structure, if you put it, everything into that one person, then that person will produce exactly what is in you. Amen. Now people say, oh, pastor, I trained up the leader and they moved to another city. Praise God. Now they can build a structure in that city. Remember, we are one church in many locations. I've got many pastors that I still need. I've got, I need somebody in Priska. I need somebody in Grodring. I need somebody in Achenais. I need somebody in Springbok. I need somebody in Kalfinia. I need somebody in, in, in Kenart. And you say, Pastor, I don't want to go to these small places. Okay, I need somebody in Zambia. I need somebody in Africa, in Uganda. I need somebody in Malawi. Because these are all my jurisdiction. I need people in Pakistan. I need people in India. I need people in Nepal. I need people in, in South America, in Argentina. I need people in... We need people everywhere. And who's going to be that person? If everybody says, oh, not me. Somebody stand up and somebody put up your hand and say, send me, pastor. Here I am. I'll go. Okay, then allow me to train you. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you can't build it here, where are you going to build it? Uh, if you can build it in Uppington, you can build anything anywhere. Because this place ain't easy. But if you can build it here, if you can build it here, you're going to do phenomenal somewhere else. But you've got to do it here. Amen. So, multiplication is not replacing or adding. Multiplication is not replacing yourself. Multiplication, it is at least doubling yourself. Multiplication, we all learn the multiplication tables, right? And it starts with one, but everything times one stays exactly the same. <laughs> so everything times two is double. So at least when you start to multiply, everything should double. So if God says, be fruitful and multiply, God said, I have already made you fruitful. I have already made you able and anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost and the supply and the support and the success to double everything that you touch. That's what you have. Now you just have to believe it and you have to release it. Believe it, release it. If you believe it, you will achieve it. Amen. Amen. Nothing happens by the way. You have to have a clear vision. And the plan that takes you daily to mission, to get closer to your vision. And you do that by setting clear goals and commit yourself each day to fulfill it. Every single day you must have a goal. Every single day you have to be intentional to get closer to where you want. I know we all want to live and you just want to break. You just want to break. You just want a break because you're working so hard. But imagine now you take a break every day. And that's why many of us are frustrated because we've been taking a break every day. And now it's 10 years later and you think, I should have. Now regret comes. Regret comes. I should have actually called that person. 
I should have actually just gone there. I should have actually just gotten up earlier in the morning. I mean, you want a job, but you wake up at 10. Who's going to employ you? No one. Nobody. I won't employ you if you wake up at 10 in the morning. Please, don't come work for me. Because then I have to wait till 11 before you start working. Every morning, you show up and you're a ghost. And then 11 o'clock you wake up. And now I can give you something to do. I don't want somebody like that. I don't think anybody wants somebody like that. So wake up, 5 o'clock. Start to pray. Get ready. Go out. Be the first one to arrive. Go stand in front of that boss's, house, boss's door because you know what? The boss is always there early. So maybe you can be there before any other person is there and tell him, Sir, I would like to work for you. Daar nou vir jou baie weise raad. Wees eerste daar. The early bird catches the worm. The early bird catches the boss when he arrives at his work. Amen. Early, up, quick, and be ready. You've got to work every day. You've got to get up and you have to get to a place where you are intentional. I want to succeed, therefore I have to do this. This is the difference between having to do something and having to do something. It's not judgmental. It is not forceful, but it is this thing that compels you. If I want to achieve, then I better get up in the morning. But if I have to stand with a whip and say, get up, get up, go to work, like you have to do with your children. Get up, go to school, get up. Brush your teeth. Do this, do this, do this. How do you feel? You're tired and you haven't even started yet. And that's how most people feel in the workforce. Because they have to beg everybody to do something. Just answer the phone, please, with the third ring. Not when you stop ringing and then you pick it up. Uh, oh, sorry, I missed it. No. With the third ring, at least, pick up the phone. Whatever you do, do it with excellence. Be there first. Be there early. Get the job done. Okay, don't sit there and now you first drink tea. It's 8 o'clock, you arrive at 8 o'clock, now you drink tea till 9 o'clock and then you start to work. Please, I don't want people like that. You won't work for me. I'll chase you. Go drink coffee at home, thank you. Not on my time, not on my watch. And many people feel like that, but we have to sit every day, and I talk to business owners now, they have to sit the whole day and they have to, 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 to just motivate people. Just do it. Just get up. Just get, smile, smile. I know it's tough at home, but you're not at home now. You're in my job. Smile. Even if you like it or not, put the fake smile on. Hmm? But be happy for me. Oh, we have a lot of education to do when it comes to this. Because what you do for somebody else, someone will do for you. What you do for somebody else, some will do for you. And if you do a diligent, hardworking, faithful, committed, then somebody will come that will be diligent, hardworking, faithful, committed. And you sow good seed, therefore you get a great harvest. But if you sow bad seed, you just get a bad harvest. Oh, come on. Some of the business people should have shouted aloud, amen, now. Because you're looking for people like that. Amen. Now become the person. Become that person. Become that person. Become that person that you need. Come on. You don't know. In 10 years from now, you run that company. And then you regret because you always were late. Now everybody that's working for you are late. No, 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 no. So good seed. Be intentional. Be diligent. Become the solution to your problems. Be, be the very solution to what you need. Amen. Have you learned something today? Are you going to be intentional? Are you going to be ready? Are you going to build? Oh, come on. The only person that can stop you is you. Nobody can stop you, not the devil. The devil can't stop you. He can't. The only person that can stop you is you. Because it's what you believe. It's what you believe. It's what you believe. Amen. Come on, let's all stand and give Jesus praise this morning. And let's receive the word. You are anointed. You are appointed. You are blessed. You are powerful. You are the head. You're not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You can succeed in the field, in the city, in your home. Wherever you are, you will succeed. Because God is for you. He's not against you. God is behind you. And with Him you can do all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's close our eyes for a moment. Father, thank you for your words that inspires, that uplifts, that empowers, 
and that gives purpose. I thank you, Jesus, that we will not be sitters, but we will be runners. That we will keep going, Lord Jesus, no matter how difficult things are, we will push through. We will build hard. We will build strong. Because ultimately the vision will speak and we shall have those things that we say we will have. Because we believe those things that we say we have, we shall have them. And I thank you, Jesus, that you empower every person, every business person, every family. Thank you, Father, that we will be intentional to build our families, intentional to build our marriages, intentional to build our spiritual lives, intentional to build your church, to be intentional to build this building and to build the people in the building. I thank you, Lord, that you have called us for great things, that we will change this city, that you have given us favor and blessing, and that we will change the face of this city because of your presence in us. Thank you, Father, that we will purposefully every single day reach out to get people saved, to fill up the house of God, to see people born again, to see people planted in the house of God, that we will be intentional to speak to people about you, just like you were intentional to die and save us, Lord. We pray that we will be intentional to reach out to this lost and broken world. That we will be intentional to preach the gospel, to talk to people, to pray for people. That we will be intentional to let our light so shine that people will see that we are your children. And so they will know that we are your disciples by the, by the love we have for one another and by the fruit that we bear. The fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the love of God, the fruit of the goodness of God, the fruit of the passion and the diligence of God in us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your anointing right now. While every head is bowed, every eye closed, I ask you today, maybe you have come to this place, and if I ask you this question, are you born again? Have you ever given your life to Jesus? You can't answer me and say, yes, pastor. And I'm not asking if you read your Bible, if you pray every day, if you have a religious relationship with God. No, I'm asking you, do you know Jesus? Do you, not knowing about Him, but know Him. Do you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you ever given your life to Jesus? Maybe you say, Pastor, I have. But you have backslid and you have walked away. And you've become so full of yourself and your own issues that you kind of drifted away from God. And today you feel guilty that you walked away. I want to tell you right now, you don't have to be guilty. You don't have to feel guilty. You can just turn around and walk back to Jesus and say, here I am. I'm sorry for leaving you. So all over this place, right there online, if that's you, you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to come back to Jesus. Then I want to pray for you. Forget about the person next to you. Nobody else can pray for you. You have to pray for yourself. It's your life. You have to build your life with Jesus. And Jesus wants to enter your life today. And only you can pray that prayer. So all over this place, nobody looking around. This is between you and God. I want to ask you, if that's you, you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. You're speaking to me today. I want to come back to Jesus. Then right now, wherever you are, quickly lift up your hand and say, Pastor, you spoke to me today. My life is not right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. Thank you. Hands are going up. Anybody else, you say, Pastor, I've backslidden. I need to come back to Jesus. Then quickly lift up your hand. I want to pray for you that still want to be included there at home. If that's you, I want to pray for you as well. It's all over this place. While every head is bowed, every eye closed. You raised your hand. You did not raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I want you to leave your seat and come to the altar where we lay our lives down before Jesus. And I know there are people that are going to respond because you've already raised your hands. And there's many more people that that pool will bring you forward. And I want to ask you, family, you brought somebody, maybe somebody standing close to you. Reach out to the friend. Reach out with love. Not condemnation, but with care and love. And just say, hi. Hey, are you sure everything is okay? Don't you, shouldn't you be up front as well? So we're going to sing this song and I'm going to give you this opportunity that you leave your seat and that you come and join me right here in front that you surrender your life to Jesus. Come on, as we sing this song, if that's you, you raised your hand, you did not raise your hand, you want to be included right now, just come. Come now. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come.
Come on, family, let's reach out to one another. Let's come, let's come, let's come, let's come. Right now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Oh, come on, there's more of you. It's the greatest honor to be able to pray with all of you right here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for, for, for allowing us to pray with you right there at home as well. I want to pray for you. And just because you are there doesn't mean that you can't change your life. I mean, this is an amazing place to be. And if you can, you should come here in the physical. Because that's important. But I want to say to each one of you that came to the front, it's the greatest honor for me to be able to pray. You know, this is what my life is all about. For me, the people know already in this church, if there's no salvations, then my life is purposeless because I'm intentional every day of my life to get people saved. Every day, I'm intentional to lead somebody to Jesus because there's nothing that we can take to heaven with us except people. My destination is heaven. Your destination is heaven. What does it help us to get there and you've made millions but nobody got saved? What does it help you to get there and you have the whole world? What does it help you to get there and even Hollywood and the whole world knows your name, but heaven doesn't know you? To have gained the whole world, but you haven't gotten anything for God. The greatest achievement is the people that we reach for Jesus and the people that we can reconcile with Jesus and the people we can take with us to heaven. That is what we live for. That is being intentional. So I want to say thank you for this morning that you have come. Thank you. It's a great honor to be able to pray with you. And I know that God's going to touch your life and He's going to change things. I'm not saying you're not going to have trouble anymore. All I'm saying is you're not alone anymore. Okay, you have the Holy Spirit with you. You have Jesus Himself with you and He's going to take you. And He's going to take you to a whole other level in Jesus' name. Please put your hand on your heart and pray this prayer with me right there at home. Put your hand on your heart. Pray this prayer with me. The Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. What must I believe? That Jesus died and rose from the the grave. He's the Son of God and that confess that He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And the Bible says, and you shall be washed by the blood of Jesus. You will be cleansed. You will be a new creation. So pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I surrender myself to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for my sin. On that cross, I believe that you rose from the dead and you are seated in heaven. And today, I ask you for the Holy Spirit to come and fill my heart. I believe that you have cleansed me, you have washed me, and today I declare I am your son, daughter. Thank you, Jesus, for a new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, in heaven there is rejoicing over every one soul. And that is what I love. I love to organize a party in heaven every day. Amen. <laughs> because that's what we do. Let us be passionate about souls. Let us be passionate about people. Family, please. Very important. We want to spend five minutes of your time and just pray for you individually. We want to follow up with you. Please help us to help you. We're not going to force you to do anything or to commit to anything. We just want to be there to support you, to pray for you, to be there with you. So we've got a safe place that we have. Everything is Corona safe, so don't worry about that. So you are welcome to just go with us for a moment as we pray for you. If you need a Bible, we want to give you one. We just want to help and pray with you. So please, if you would be so kind, turn to your left, my right. Just follow the leaders to that side. Thank you so much. Come on, family. Let's clap as people are going. Come on. Amen. You can take your seat for a moment. Okay, Freek, is jy recht vir die eerste diens ook? Kom, I'm going to ask Freek to come and do the offering this morning. Family, let us be intentional with our giving. Let us be intentional with our giving.
Some of you are still so religious that you only believe in giving on the 10th month of the year. 